By the time we reach even Practical 2 in SIT 103, we'll need an ability to upload files into our Deacon Interactive environment rather than typing dozens of SQL statements into the SQL Plus prompt. There are several ways to achieve this. For example, if running Linux or OS X, the SFTP command can be run directly from the terminal, or in Windows, third-party tools like WinSCP can help, and the new Windows subsystem for Linux removes the need for third-party apps altogether in Windows 10. In this video, however, we'll establish a connection to our home directory using the Deacon VPN and map our home directory directly into Windows Explorer. The same can be achieved for Finder in Mac or for Nautilus, Dolphin or whichever file explorer you're using if running Linux. There are three parts to this video. Part 1 and 2 cover setup and Part 3 provides a brief overview of use. The first step is to set up Deacon VPN in order to establish a secure connection from your computer to the Deacon Cisco servers. This is a one-time setup, and then each time you want to connect, you just need to use your Deacon password. To obtain the Cisco AnyConnect client, open your web browser and navigate to software.deacon.edu.au. You can then either type Cisco in the search box or scroll down to the AnyConnect link near the bottom of the page. Once there, open the download link and download the client for your operating system. AnyConnect is cross-platform, so there are binaries available for Windows, Mac and Linux. This will download an archive that you need to extract before installation. Once extracted, right-click on the Install Deacon VPN and run as administrator. If you have an admin rights on your computer, this will install and automatically configure the AnyConnect client to connect to the university. Following Install, you will find Cisco AnyConnect in your Start menu or by typing Cisco in the search bar. From your home computer, click Connect to Deacon VPN Unencrypted Internet and enter your Deacon username and password. As students, we don't use multi-factor authentication for the Cisco connection, so no second password or PIN is required. Once you hit OK, the connection will establish, and if there are sessions available for the server to hand out, you might see some notifications. After that, the connection status will be shown as an icon in your menu bar. If you have any difficulty connecting, particularly during the day, try again later. In our current COVID-19 world, there might be a lot of people connected through the gateway during business hours, so not knowing how many licenses the university has, you might just be trying to connect when all of the logins available are handed out. Once a connection is established, you can then proceed to part two. The second part is to map the network drive. To do that, open Windows Explorer and right click on network in the left hand menu, then select map network drive. Choose any drive letter that's not currently in use, but since we're connecting to our home directory, H is a good choice. The address to map is backslash backslash your username dot homes dot deacon dot edu dot au backslash my dash home. Check connect using different credentials and don't check reconnect at sign in. If you have reconnect at sign in ticked, your computer will expect you to have a VPN session active whenever you restart your computer, which you won't. So as a student, not always connected to the Deacon network, leave that unchecked. When the window opens, we need to provide the username including the domain and our password. To include the domain, type du backslash in lowercase followed by your username. After entering your password, if you have an active VPN connection, your home directory will be mapped through and connected successfully. When the drive is connected, a green line can be seen in the icon. When there is no connection, a red cross will be in the place instead. Once this is configured, your home directory is ready to use via VPN anytime you need. To cover off one issue, in part 3 we'll look at how to use this so that you can work on files simultaneously while accessing SQL Plus using the SSH connection, without needing to use an SFTP command or other software. There is one minor convenience that the VPN causes. With an active VPN connection to your home directory, there is no port open from there to connect to Deacon Interactive. 
If you try to SSH into Deacon Interactive with an active VPN connection, you'll likely receive an error. This is easy to overcome. Anytime you want to work with files and with SQL Plus at the same time, establish the Deacon Interactive connection before connecting to the VPN. Here, I'll disconnect from the VPN and then use SSH to establish my connection to Deacon Interactive. Once connected to Deacon Interactive, you can then connect via VPN and the secure shell connection will remain in place. Now that you have both a SQL Plus prompt and are connected to your home directory, you can open te a text editor such as Notepad Plus or Visual Studio Code and write SQL scripts that can be saved directly to your Deacon home or any other directory. From there, you can then run those scripts using the Oracle start or at command, which provides an efficient way to, to run large blocks of SQL. Here I'll clear the screen and then check that I have no current tables. Running my SQL script, the output shows that the SQL commands have executed effectively. Checking my tables again, I can see that I have an employees table, and if I select all the records, the data is the same as contained in the SQL file. Mapping the network drive provides a convenient way to work naturally in your file explorer and to move files to and from your Deacon home directory or to work on files locally and save them into your Deacon, fo into your Deacon folders. However, anytime you do so, it goes without saying, we need to always operate within the policies of Deacon that we have all agreed to.